booth staffing. I think it's a big topic because it's at every single show. Everyone has mm -hmm. to deal with it. You wrote the 10 commandments of booth staffing. Let's review yeah. the 10 commandments of booth staffing and give out some practical tips and, you know, discuss a few of them. Well, one of the biggest ones that I see a lot is the issue of cell phones. You know, people, I, I can walk by an exhibit and say there's three staffers. One will be at this end on the phone. One will be at the other mm -hmm. end texting. And then the third person is, you know, also doing something on their phone. I mean, nobody's yeah. paying attention to the people right in front of them. And I get that, you know, especially if you're a salesperson or if there's things going on back at the office, that there's stuff that you need to do. You, know, you need to talk to people. You may need to return a text, whatever. But you step away from the booth to do that. You don't stand in your booth and, mm -hmm. you know, just head down on the phone. That's probably the one thing I see the most often, especially yeah. these days. Another be one is- Be present, right? I mean, be, yeah, be, present. be present, be engaged, be, be active, be- People are attracted to that when you're in person at events. Well, I always tell exhibitors, it's like you paid good money to be in front of the people that are walking the aisles. Yeah. You know, yeah, you don't can miss have the this. Yeah, don't miss the opportunity. You can have this yeah. other conversation off the show floor or, you know, walk to the end of the aisle and stand in, you know, some open space or go outside or whatever you need to do to have that conversation on the phone. Yeah. But when you're in the booth, you are in the booth. I mean, you, you are there to interact with the people that are walking by. So that's really key. Another thing that I see a lot is uh, I tell people, you shall not sit. And that's not to say you can't ever sit. I know a lot of exhibitors now have like a conference area, whether it be, you know, a high table with bar stools or a lounge area or something. But what I tell exhibitors is don't sit unless you're sitting with an attendee or a client and having a conversation. You don't want to just be looking like you're just sitting there lounging in your booth. You want yeah. to be up and engaged and interacting yeah. and then take them over to the lounge area and sit down and have a conversation. That's fine. But yeah, too many people, you know, the chairs for a long time, I said no chairs at all in exhibits. And now I understand, you know, there really is a need for that in certain instances, but don't use the chair as a crutch where you're just, um, sitting there waiting for the next person to walk yeah. by because they're probably not going to come in your booth. You know what else I like about the, I mean, just those two, I know they're simple, they're, they're simple, but it's, it's kind of like, look, when you go to a party, when you are in a social setting, which is what a trade show is, people gravitate towards energy. They gravitate towards exactly. conversation. They don't gravitate towards people sitting by themselves or sitting and looking miserable or on their phones off in another faraway land. They gravitate towards the party. They gravitate towards mm -hmm. the engaging face-to-face -face discussion, the liveliness. So that's what I like about those two. Let's go, let's go to the third. Well, there's there's another one that's kind of the flip side of that. You don't want to ignore them, but you also don't want to attack them either. Mm -hmm. And I see yeah. that so often. You know, in fact, I just was recently talking with an exhibitor and he said, okay, we want to have two staffers in the booth, and then we had want to have one out in the aisle. And I'm like, no, you don't want to have like one out in the yeah. aisle you know you want the people in the booth to be engaging and starting the conversations to draw people in but you don't want to be out in the aisle basically yeah. capturing people and dragging them into your booth that is not the point hit us with the fourth well another one is you don't want to put out every piece of literature you have or mm. every giveaway oh. you're giving away or you know just piling yeah. stuff on your table because that encourages what i call the scoop and run syndrome where people just come by, they see stuff, they grab it, they throw it in their tote bag, and then it may never be looked at or touched yeah. again until it goes in the trash. <laughs> but yeah. you want you want to use any anything that you're handing out, you want it to be presented after you've had a conversation. So especially your giveaway. Your giveaway should be more as a thank you for somebody stopping by your booth, talking with you, and definitely giving you the opportunity to scan their badge or collect their contact information. Yeah. You don't just want it to be you know, as people often say, trick or treaters running by and grabbing things. Yeah. You know, that one, I think a lot of literature ends up all over the place. It's information overload. No one wants to sit and read yeah. something. I always say, use it as an opportunity to engage, right? Use it as an opportunity to create engagement, to give something away. Or if you're going to give them something, give them something that they're going to need to read or that they're going to need to open up later right. date, not, not just a handout, just a handout. 
or even better have a QR code that they can scan and it, it downloads yep. the PDF straight to their phone, you know, or sends them straight yep. to the link or whatever, but that way they don't have to carry things around. All right. What's your fifth? Don't eat or drink. And, you know, I see this a lot and a lot of shows, unfortunately, encourage this bad behavior because they'll have happy hours on the show floor. And yeah. at that point, all the exhibitors are standing around eating and drinking and they're, you know, not really <laughs> maybe yeah. sometimes on their most professional behavior, should we say. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as far as having food and drink in the booth, I have some personal stories of things that went wrong. Um, yeah. But, you know, just just the unprofessionalness of it, of standing around, yeah. you know, if you're stuffing your face with a cheeseburger or something, nobody's going to want to stop and talk to you. Let's go to number six. You shall not leave early or arrive late. That's another one mm -hmm. that yeah. I see, especially the leave early part. Uh, a lot of exhibitors shut down before the show is ever over. And I feel like that is extremely rude to the attendees because, you know, somebody who maybe could only be there on the last day, maybe they weren't there yeah. for the whole time. You know, they're walking the show floor that afternoon of the last day. They deserve to have the same experience as the people who were there on the first day. And I've actually heard other exhibitors say that they get their best lead to the show sometimes at the very yeah. end, like within the last couple hours. So you, again, it goes back to you paid money to be there the whole time. So yeah. why pack it in early? All right. So we have no phone, no sitting. Don't be out in the aisles overselling. And I'm not saying he's correct with your commandments, but I'm giving the rough. Yeah. You know, don't don't overhand out literature and have it everywhere. No eating and drinking. Do your best not to leave early or arrive late. Right. So what that's uh, one, two, three, that's six. What's the seventh? Let's see. Again, I'm not going in order here. So I'm trying to see which ones I haven't covered yet. Oh, you shall not fill your booth with staffers. So too many exhibitors, you know, they they think, oh, we got to have, you know, we got a 10 by 10 booth. We got four people going to the show. We got to have all four people in the booth. No, if you have four staffers in a 10 by 10 space, nobody is going to want to walk into your booth. Well, nobody can probably walk into your booth because you've got it full of people. So, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 and again, it kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier with the, the sales team and they all congregate and hang out in the booth. If you have a whole, I mean, if you're blessed to have this huge roster of people at the show that you can have in your booth as staffers, rotate them out. You don't need to have all of them there at a time, you know, rotate them out, have, you know, give them the opportunity. Everybody wants the opportunity to actually walk the show. So I know I've worked a lot of shows by myself in a booth and I feel like, you know, I never get the chance to actually see the show. So, you know, schedule time for each person to be outside the booth, walking the show, learning, experiencing, going to sessions, whatever, but have just a limited number of people. And obviously it's going to be like day one, you're going to need a few more people yeah. in your booth than you would on day three, you know, last day, whatever. But, um, you know, just making sure you're scheduling those people so that they're not all hanging out in the booth all yeah, the time. I, I agree. All right. Number eight, we got, we got three more left here. Okay. One of the things that people always think is really odd is like, you should not put your hands in your pockets is one of my commandments. And they're like, well, that's kind of an odd commandment. Why do you say that? Well, first of all, there's a couple different reasons, but first of all, not to pick on you, Matt, but guys especially tend to keep what in their pockets, keys, change, Bone. Stuff that makes noise. Yeah. 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 You know, yep. and if you're nervous, if you're standing in the booth and you're nervous and you're going to be standing there with your hands in your pockets, what are you going to be doing the whole time? Jingling. So you're standing. And I know because my husband is one of these people and it's like, sometimes yeah. I'm like, just stop jingling. I'm trying to talk to you. <laughs> you know? So it can be very nerve wracking, but it's also just bad body posture, you know, bad. Yeah. It sends bad signals, yeah. bad body language signals. So if you've got your hands in your pockets, same thing if you've got your arms crossed, it, that's also sending yeah. bad signals. So, you know, I, I realize it's tough, but just keep your arms at your sides and ready to, you know, engage with people, shake hands, mm -hmm. you know, hand them, you know, if you're doing giveaways or something, handing them something, you know, but not, you just, again, it goes back to, like you said, you're on stage. You need to be high energy yeah. and ready to engage with people. Absolutely. Okay. We got two more. Two more. So don't create barriers to traffic. And that could be with the, the things in your booth. That could be with your booth staff itself. If you've got too many staff for the size of space you have, but if everybody's like parked along the aisle, 
and you look like this whole, um, what do I want to say, firing squad <laughs> or something, you yep. know. So make sure that you've got people kind of spread out around throughout your booth, spread your stuff around your booth. I always say, especially those inline booths, the 10 by 10s and the 10 by 20s, yeah you you paid for the whole space so use the whole space don't just use the space along the aisle bring people into your booth and use that space yeah there's one way in one way out of those spaces right and i think the other thing is this should spark conversation inside of your organization which is what is the attendee user experience at our space look like when somebody comes up what happens right where are we trying to take them how are we hosting a conversation how are we engaging where are we giving stuff away and if right. you are just standing there like a firing squad, you're not going to get people to be invite to come in. Again, all this, just making things more welcoming, making the conversation, the flow, the traffic, just a better space to actively engage your customer. What's the 10th? What's the last? The last one is you shall smile. And that just mm -hmm. kind of ties back into like everything we've said, you know, having good body language, being engaged, having good energy. Yeah being ready and welcoming, you know, just smiling. And I know by the yeah. last day, that's really hard. But again, if you've got a big enough staff and you can rotate people out so everybody feels refreshed and you're not just, you know, sometimes you don't have an option. Sometimes it's maybe you and a partner and that's it and you're working the whole show. But if you yeah. can at all, you know, give people breaks. And even if you are the one doing the whole show, Make sure that you you do remember that you are on stage during that time and you've just got to keep positive and being welcoming to people. Like we talked about, it doesn't matter what hour they come by your booth, they still deserve the same attention and the same pleasant demeanor. I think what a lot of your, what all your 10 commandments, what they, of booth staffing, what they really make me think is this idea that like, you know, say you're a software company and you sell a $20,000 software. It's pretty expensive. There's ones of 50, sick, you know, you have like, what is your product? What is your service? Then compare it to say going out, you know, if you're a high end service, now consider you and a group of people that you're taking out to a high end dinner, right? Or you're going into, I don't know, Louis Vuitton and buying a purse with your wife or husband, whoever, and, and you know, how you're, going into something like that. If they're on their phones, if they're sitting down, if they're overselling you, if they're handing you literature, if they're, you know, eating and drinking, like think about your own personal experiences in retail mm -hmm. as a consumer. You don't want any of these things. You don't want barrier of entry. You don't want people standing around looking miserable, You right? You don't want to walk into a store that's got 50 people working and everybody up here, you know what? Like this stuff all applies to just human nature. And when you're in exactly. a trade show booth, you're selling. You're selling your company. You're selling yourself. Put a smile on it. It's some showmanship, you know? It's like, go sell yourself. Go sell your company. And part of that is 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 not doing a lot of these things. Just like- you wouldn't want them done to you. Exactly. That's where I was going to go is looking at how you get treated. You talked about the retail experience. Look about how you get treated at retail stores. How would you mm -hmm. like to be treated instead? And really yeah. model the behavior of the way that you wish that people would treat you. Even in a small booth, I think if you modeled that kind of behavior and really gave people, everybody who comes yeah. into your booth, you gave them that VIP experience without making them feel like you said, like you're just, you know, smothering yeah. them and all over them, but just doing it in a way where it makes them feel special, makes mm -hmm. them feel important. That's the whole key to all of this is you got to make those attendees feel like they are the most important person on the show floor, no matter what color badge they have, no matter what you know, what part of the country they're from, no matter what their job title says, if they come in your booth and they show interest, they deserve to be treated like a VIP. Yeah. I mean, experience is king, right? People want experiences. They want to feel a certain way. People want to feel good about their mm -hmm. interaction. They work with people that they like. So I think a lot of these really apply directly. 